Does anybody have any questions or any comments? Alice Monroe, who just no, um, the other one. The other one, the other one. There's only two. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Atwood. Oh, Margaret Atwood. Okay. And she, it was a magical interview. I was very pleased with Atwood. I loved her. Mm-hmm. She's wonderful. And she said that mystery writers know the end. All mystery writers know the end, and then construct the book back to the end. Is, <laughs> is that part of what you do? I'm not a mystery writer. <laughs> I never know the end. I never know the end until I get there. Well, it can make more of a mess along the way, you know. Um, and I'm not saying you shouldn't know the end. Some people work that way where they know where they're going. Um, I tend to have a sense of how I think the characters will be transform- transformed by the end, but I don't know exactly how that's going to happen. Yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful yeah, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Mark. Have you lived in Georgia or San Francisco? Sadly, I have not lived in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I might have jumped, actually. I don't know if that was me or not. Um, I lived in North Carolina and grew up up and down the, the south, so I have spent time in Georgia, but I have never lived in Georgia. And every time I can get to San Francisco that's humanly possible, I will go. Yeah. Yeah. What sparks you to, to, do things just uh, float around in your, your mind at times, or is it something that somebody else says, or, and then does it brew for a long time, and then you start putting together some pieces, and then finally, Yeah. Is that sort of the process? So, what, you know, every book is different, I have found. Right. And yeah. All three of the things there. Right? Yeah. You know, and, um, and I don't ever want to write the same book twice. Yeah. So that requires, yeah. you know, me to always want to be pushing myself with my craft farther. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, otherwise I'll rely on what I already know how to do. And I don't want to keep doing what I already know how to do. I want to do something better than what I did before. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So, like, Gathering Lights actually started about eight years ago, and I had the scene in Golden Gate Park, which I've read to, in other areas here, and I had this, that scene, and I knew I had a book, but I didn't know what, and any idea what the book was. And I tried all kinds of ways into that. I actually wrote another two books in between starting that book and kind of having, but once I got Remy's voice, and Remy's voice came after Keith and I went to San Francisco, and there was actually a man who tried to get us to buy his poems um, when we were walking down the street. And he like hands us his poems, you know, for like a buck and go back to the hotel room. We're like, oh, wow, they're great poems. But, you know, they were, they were they're like, That's what a guy would do that. How cool would that be? Somebody who wants to hold um, the street accountable and hold his experience to hate and to the past accountable. And so um, once I got him and I got the sound of him, then I suddenly had the the um, connective tissue yeah. for that book. Yeah, and then, then this book, um, Mrs. Abigail Fisher was, was going to have Alzheimer's. Did I just ruin everything, Thatcher? Um, was gonna have um, Alzheimer's and, uh, and I started with that path and I wasn't able to get very far. I thought that was interesting if someone were, were starting to sink into Alzheimer's and their characters came back and that's what was real for them. So that was the initial impetus. And then, um, because I'll never run out of mother-daughter issues, the mother-daughter piece began to surface in, in, this, um, you know, in this book. And then I, I, I pulled it out away from that and just tried to focus just on a, a, a rogue character, basically, and the author, and the war between, or the, the, and how they both really need one another. Um, so this book was written quicker. This one was about eight years. This one was about two years. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Um, extremely clever when you said me, Georgia, about <laughs> Nastasia. So I'd like to ask about 
so Pistachio uh, talks to you about talking to another writer. I, I love the layers. So want to talk about the relationship between you and this Pistachio um, while you were writing? But with Pistachio and I, mm -hmm. well, with Pistachio and me, while I was while I was, yes. while I was writing, I actually identified much more with Abby, sure. with the writer. Sure. And so, um, Pistachio forced me to write conflict because I don't like conflict, <laughs> and I have you know reluctantly realized that it's essential to fiction, <laughs> and so <laughs> to. Um, to um, so so she she was like all id, you know, kind of almost like like Frankenfurter from from Rocky Horror, you know, um, and and her wildness and her insistence on being who she was and who she felt she was meant to be, I think helped give me some more fierceness about putting my own work out there and being you know, um, being a stronger writer than I was allowing myself to be. I think she was, she was like, dude, speak it, you know, kind of a relationship, so. Did she wake you up? Everybody wakes me up. <laughs> <laughs> and the cats wake me up, too. <laughs> Janine? You said each book is so different, mm -hmm. and yet don't you find there are the mother-daughter piece. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, exile is a recurring theme in my work, um, and uh, yeah, mother-daughter. And there's always a ghost um, of of some kind. They're not always as literal, um, but there's always some ghost because I think of ghosts as um, uh, just the things we carry with us more than literal beings that are haunting, like, in, but in Gathering Lights, she's a literal, she's real, coming back. But mostly my ghosts are more just stuff that kind of hangs on the walls, and, and that fascinates me. So that, I think, kind of comes up in everything that I do also. Yeah, I think writers have questions that you end up exploring over and over, and you just kind of keep turning the question and looking at it differently with each book as you grow and as you hopefully keep maturing as a writer and keep gaining... Um, getting more confidence in your own voice, you keep, like, oh, right, there's that. I didn't look at it from that angle. Oh, you know, so instead of like, oh, my God, it's my mother again, like, oh, look at that. I didn't understand that. And, and for me, writing breaks my heart open. And so, like, each book and each story helps me love more deeply. So it's like, um, yeah, they're the greatest thing. And it's the greatest thing. And I, um, this book, I, I, um, really wrote it like I specifically for writers um, to talk about how important it is to to love your characters to show up for them to be with them they are they help you be the person that you're supposed to be and so um, so it was really like this is a love letter to writers this particular book was you know and I wasn't sure if it would have a a particularly wide audience if you weren't a reader, if you, like, you didn't know who Edwin Drood was, like, there's, there's references upon references and, you know, in there. But, um, but if you're a writer and if you're a reader, it's for you. Know, it's for you. And it's because and, I think for me, uh, writing is um, it's just the way I see everything in the world. It's the way I interact with everything living and past. And I, I want people who have that in them you know, and, and I'm not saying other art forms and other things don't do that, but people who have this writing in them, don't, don't turn your back on it. And don't, don't decide it's not important. Um, do it, because it will save your life. Like, it's there, it's what you've got to help you in this world. So use it and show up for it. Susan? Yeah, you said that you identify with the writer, not the sure. But as a writer, how do you feel about unruly characters? want to come in and do their own thing and don't want to do what you want. Yeah, How yeah. How do you feel about this kind of Yeah. Thing? Like I feel about the students I want to drop by week two. <laughs> <laughs> None of whom are in the audience at the moment. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, um, I used to think they were a problem, but I have since come to see that even if they don't fit, if like they're not the right character for that book, they're bringing a piece that I need for that book. And so um, 
so I've learned some patience kind of around, especially in the early like two, three drafts of just like, who's here? Why are you here? You know, it's all, you know, I don't know why everybody's here. And then I get to select who really gets to stay when I get a better sense of what the story is. Um, but yeah, I didn't like them for a long time, but I didn't know they were actually the book, you know? <laughs> Poke, 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 right? You're the book. Yeah. Um, I believe it was Lucy who said that all characters are stereotypes and it just depends what the writer does with them. Is that something you believe? No. Mm -mm. It's something that Lucy believes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is your philosophy on characters then, from that you know, aspect of stereotyping? Um, I don't think any fully observed character can be a stereotype. And you shouldn't have someone in your book that's not fully observed. So, you know, I, um, the stereotypes come in when the writer isn't willing to look underneath that and see what's really there and why that's there. And the stereotype becomes what you rely on because it's just the, oh, everyone knows what that character is. That's the X character. That's the Y character. And, you know, and if you're doing a parody or you're doing something, you know, there's, there's time for that. But if you're doing, you know, if you're doing serious literature, um, you have to look underneath and find out what they really are underneath the mask. They've given you their mask, they've presented yourself with the mask, and then your job is to see what's underneath that. And, and a lot of writers won't go underneath. They'll just stop at the, like, oh yeah, everyone knows this is the, you know, this is the crazy cat lady character, <laughs> you know? Well, no, <laughs> she's more than that. What is she? Why is she there? Why is she, and more importantly, why is she there with you? Why is she your character and nobody else's character? No. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.